We know all that God is just, and no unjust will happen to any person. But when I talk to my atheist friends online and in person, there are questions that I cannot answer is where is the just? When I become Muslim and everything is easy because I was born in this side of the world, or I was born in this family. I know you just answered that about the people who's born in atheist family and such, but the question is, what should I tell them ex precisely? If I tell them that God is just and they will be answered in the judgment day, they'd be their answer is, I don't believe in God and I don't believe of the judgment day. So my answer is invalid to them or it doesn't give them what they want to know. Well, I think first of all, sister, to me, the answer in some ways is quite obvious because you are talking to those people. Therefore, you are giving them the opportunity to change and to accept the truth. How then can they complain about the message not reaching them when you are the messenger bringing the message to them? Right? And, and this is the thing. I really have to say, I hate to generalize about a group of people. There are some atheists who are maybe genuinely confused people, right? But honestly, many of them are very arrogant people. When you begin to discuss with them, you see it. You will give them very reasonable answers and they come with very unreasonable replies. And these are the people who are claiming that they are reasonable. I would also recommend, highly recommend, you give to your atheist friends you're talking to online. Just ask them to read this book, The Man in the Red Underpants. Ask them to read it and see if they can come to a response to what is in it. And you should read it yourself, inshallah. You will find it very, very helpful because the beginning of the book is talking exactly about the issues to do with how do we know and how can we be convinced that God exists. The other point I want to point out, sister, is again the point of fitrah. We believe that every human being has an instinctive knowledge. Everybody. Atheism is an acquired position. And this study done by the Oxford Institute for Anthropology and Psychology, 1.9 million pounds they spent, 60 academics across the world. They did this including China, including countries that are largely, they don't believe in God. What did they do is when they examined children and they questioned them and they gave them certain tests, in fact, what did they find? They did have a concept of God and they did have a concept of the afterlife. So even in these atheistic societies, children still had this basic natural concept. And this is some of the reasons why they concluded that the belief in God and the belief in religion and the belief in afterlife is actually a natural instinctive belief in the human being, right? So you find, as I said, I think the main reasons why a person chooses to be an atheist is because something bad happened to them in their life and they think, you know, how could God let this happen to me? Or they just don't want to live their life by some rules. That's it. They don't want rules in their life. They just want to be able to do whatever they want without feeling that there's some accountability. There may be other reasons, and some people are genuinely confused about, for example, the problem of evil. Another thing that often they say is religion has led to so many wars. You see, religion has led to so many wars. How can religion be true when religion has led to so many wars and so many problems? Anyway, the point comes again. Is this a rational argument? Think about it. Is this a rational argument? No, it's not rational. Because you could still conclude, I'm not saying this is the case. I'm not saying this is the case. But rationally, you could say, well, maybe God likes wars. It doesn't prove there's not a God. It doesn't even prove whether a religion is true or not. What is the basis for them to say, because religion causes wars, it can't be true? 
What's the basis? It's not a rational basis. It's emotional. It's just an emotional appeal. It's not rational. And anyway, it's not true. Again, what they have found, psychologists have found that people who have religious beliefs are much happier, live longer lives, and more beneficial and happy lives than people who have no religion. This is pretty much a fact. So this is what psychologists are telling us, that religion generally makes people happy. Let's take another thing. Okay, if you're saying religion has caused so many wars, how about Pol Pot? Pol Pot, you know from Cambodia, the dictator who was responsible for the death of millions and millions of people. How about Stalin? How many people did Stalin kill? And Hitler? And so many other people who had no religion whatsoever. These wars were not caused by religion, but they are the most bloody and awful wars that have, the world has ever seen. Even most of the wars that you find taking place today are not religious wars. They are wars over resources. They are wars based upon materialism. So this claim that religion has caused, it's, you know what we can say? It's an outdated cliche. It's ridiculous to make this type of claim, and it's not even a rational claim anyway. But you know, some of these people, they are confused. So it's our job, inshallah, and I'm very glad this people like talking to these people online and mashallah, trying to convince them and communicate with them. And that's really fantastic. I wish there was a lot more people like this sister, Jazakallah khair.